So I just got an email from AWS and boy, do I have something exciting to share with you. Wait, we got a new set of APIs on the block for Amazon SQS or Amazon Simple Queue service that we call SQS more often. And these new APIs have been crafted with one primary focus, one primary focus to streamline the management of the dead letter queue or DLQ as we love to call it. So in Amazon SQS, if a message can't be processed successfully after a certain number of attempts, it's moved to the dead letter queue. We all know this. So we control the number of processing attempts with a maximum receive count setting in the source queue. The unprocessed message will stay in the DLQ until it's manually deleted or message retention period expires. So this gives developers an opportunity to examine the message and understand why it's processing failure. Developers can then either fix the issue or retry processing the message or delete it if it is no longer relevant. So what's new then? So we got the APIs to manage DLQs and automate moving messages between standard queues and the DLQ. And today we will get to try these new features. So are you ready? Shall we start? But now, before we dive right into the meaty bits, Let's take a brief moment to jog our memory on the role that DLQ plays in our messaging system. So, shall we? Let's begin. Now, messages can't always be processed due to various reasons like issues with your application or unexpected changes in your system. And when this happens, the messages ends up in the dead letter queue or the messages end up in the dead letter queue. So how do we manage this? So enter read write policy. So this sets the rules for when Amazon SQS moves messages from the main queue to the DLQ if they aren't processed after several attempts. And then we have the read write allow policy which specifies which queries can use the dead letter queue. And you can set it to allow all queues, some specific queues or none at all. Yes. You can manage all this via console or the AWS SDKs and remember multiple queues can target a single DLQ, queue so it's quite flexible. So there you have it, a quick overview of how DLQ works but now let's visualize this whole process. So here we have our producer which will be pushing messages to be processed. So this is our simple message queue and we have two consumers eagerly waiting to process those messages. Now, if a message can't be processed successfully, it doesn't just disappear. It'll keep on retrying over and over again until it reaches what we call the maximum receive count. In our case, we have set this retry policy to 5. So after 5 unsuccessful attempts, our message says goodbye to the queue and hello to the dead letter queue. On the flip side, if the message is successfully processed, we can use a delete message request to remove it from the queue and that is the normal life cycle of a message in SQS. But what happens if the message fails and the maximum receive count is exceeded? This is where our dead letter queue comes in. Once the message receive count is exceeded for a message, it gets transferred here. And here's the cool part. We can set up separate consumers to manage these messages. These separate consumers will process the message, delete them or and here's where it gets really interesting. Analyze them as well. Yes, by looking at the message in the dead letter queue, we can figure out why these messages weren't successfully processed in the first place. Yes, exactly. We can figure out why these messages weren't successfully processed in the first place itself. Okay, so let's get to the most important part or the most interesting part. There's the demo for the new feature of the APIs that I already spoke about. So before we jump in, we need to ensure that you have the latest version of the AWS CLI. And if you're not using it, you'll not be able to use this because the older version of the AWS CLI will not give you the commands that we need. So make sure that you have the latest one. And if you don't, and if you're using Windows, you can basically go to this website, AWS CLI latest user guide. And here you can see Windows and you can just download this particular CL MSI file, AWS CLI v2 and you can install it. So this will install uh, like a version 2.12. So now it is sh showing here 2.10, but it has already updated, uh, upgraded uh, to 2.12. And similarly, if you have Mac OS, you can do this using geo installer or command line. 
So this is the one that I have here. So we have the AWS hyphen hyphen version as 2.12. And if you're not using it, you will get an error and you will not be able to move forward. And I'll tell you what is the error and where I faced this error and I had to upgrade this version so that you don't face it. And as we are working with SQS, we'll start off by setting up two queues, one for our main application and one as the dead letter queue. So we'll call them Pytholic main and Pytholic DLQ. So first, let's create the dead letter queue that is Pytholic DLQ. So to create that, we need to just first configure the AWS by providing the secret key ID. So this you can get it from your IAM user. And once you click on the IAM user, you can go there to your IAM profile and you can just create a new credential or you can use the existing one. So you have to enter the access key ID here and the secret access key here. And then you need to provide the region name that you're working on. So currently I'm working on AP South one and the format of the output that you want. So currently it is JSON for me. And I like JSON because it is very much readable for me. So I'll be using JSON. So just hit enter and you have to configure this first before even running your AWS commands because I will not be able to identify who is running this command and where we need to execute the operation that you're trying to execute. So the AWS configure will need your credentials and it will help you execute the commands on your account. So the first thing for us is to create the SQS queue. So we will type AWS space SQS create hyphen Q hyphen hyphen will provide the Q name Q name and my Q name is Pytholic DLQ. So this is basically the name of the DLQ. So just type enter and it will create the queue for you. So we have HTTPS SQS AP South one Amazon AWS dot com pytholic dlq so this has been created so this is the queue url now so we need this so don't worry we'll be using this so now what we need to do we need to retrieve the or we need to retrieve the arn of our newly created pytholic dlq so how do we do that so there is a command here as well so we will type aws space sqs space get hyphen q hyphen attribute attributes Hyphen, what is the attribute that we need? So now as we are fetching the ARN for the dead letter Q, so we will pass on this information that we have here, the Q URL, and I'll paste it here. Just remove this quote. This quote is not required here. Okay, so I'll just clear this so that you can see this properly. So now that you have entered AWS SQS get Q attribute Q URL, so what is the attribute that you want to fetch? That's basically Q ARN. So I'll just type the attribute name attribute names space q a r n so this is the one that we want to fetch so just type enter so now you get the q a r n for the dead letter q so now on to creating our main application queue that is pytholic main and we'll set a read drive policy that uh, directs messages to the dlq after three unsuccessful delivery attempts so we are going to set a main queue which will have a redrive policy so that it can redirect messages to the dead letter queue if there are three unsuccessful delivery attempts. So now in order to do this, we can use a command called the create queue command. And along with that, we can pass on attributes so that um, we can write the whole operation in a single go in a single command itself. So I'll show you how you can do that. So now you can just type AWS SQS create hyphen Q. This is same. You know this. Q hyphen name is Pytholic main. And this is where the interesting part starts. So hyphen hyphen attribute. So I want to pass on attributes. So my attributes will be this. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to have a redrive policy, which will in turn have a target for the dead letter Q, which is AWS ARN. SQS AP South one Pytholic DLQ. This is the dead letter Q and maximum receive count that I'm setting here is three. So after three unsuccessful attempts, it should go to the dead letter Q. So that's what it means. So you are creating a Q here with the Q name Pytholic mean whose attributes are having a redrive policy where it can be 
redirected to upon unsuccessful message transmission so now that's it we just need to hit enter i'll just give you the commands as well in the description or in the uh, the github repository i'll provide you the link don't worry about these commands these commands are already available in the api link that i'm going to share with you so just follow what i'm doing right now it is going to be very interesting for you as well so just hit enter now we have got the queue url for the main queue as well so now everything is set the next main important thing for us is to like if we have a queue what do we need we need messages isn't it so we need to send a message so let's send a message to our main queue so in order to send a message what we need to do we need to just type again a aws sqs command we'll just type a send message command that will have a, a queue url as a parameter that we can pass so the queue url will be this one okay so i'll just copy and paste it here and then i can just pass whatever message i want to send so message hyphen body space what is the message that i want to send hello from pytholic just remove this that's it now once your message is sent successfully you'll get the md5 checksum value for that particular message and the message id so now let's pretend our python code or in a consumer side has a hiccup and it could not process the message correctly so this is the scenario that we are trying to develop here so to make this we'll receive the message three times without deleting it which will prompt aws sqs to move the message to our dead letter queue so how do we do that so we will perform a receive message operation three times at an interval of 30 seconds which will be our visibility timeout and if in these three attempts in an interval of 30 seconds each the message is not being processed it will be sent to the dead letter queue that is our intention so let's do that so now we have to do a aws sqs receive message hyphen hyphen q url so wh where are we trying to receive the message from we are trying to receive the message from the queue itself from the main queue itself because now we are not able to process it so once we receive it three times and it is still not processed then what it means it is not able to process and it has to be sent to the dead letter queue okay i think i made a mistake here let's go up r-e-c-e-i-v-e -E -E. yes don't make this mistake like me so aws sqs receive message just hit enter and you will get the message id so this is the only message that we sent isn't it the body is hello from pytholic so message id received handle md5 checks some value and the body of that message that is hello from pytholic so let's wait for 30 seconds and just repeat this operation three times so wait for 30 seconds do it again wait for 30 seconds do it again just do it like three times so i'll do this three times and i'll get back to you let's wait for another 30 seconds and run the operation once again okay now it should be moved to the dead letter queue see now we send the message receive message now there is no response from that particular command so it should mean that this message is already sent to the dead letter queue so how do we validate this so we can just do a receive message from the dead letter queue itself so we'll just change it and we'll just type dlq and we'll see if there is a message yes it is in the dead letter queue so now this message is in the dead letter queue and after verifying that the message has been moved to the dead letter queue we can initiate a redrive operation that was the whole purpose of this demo so after verifying the message has been moved to the dead letter queue we can initiate a redrive operation to move it back to the main queue and this is one of the newer apis that has been introduced and if you're not using the latest version of aws cli you will not be able to execute this particular command so that command is aws sqs start message move task so i'm trying to move a task so what it does is is starts an asynchronous task to move messages from a specified source queue to a specified destination queue and the source queue should be your dead letter queue and currently only dead letter queue arns are accepted so you must provide a dead letter queue arn here so let's go back here the dead letter queue arn is this one so it has been copied so i just copied this so i'll just paste it here so there's the one and you must be thinking if i have a source then do i need to provide a destination arn as well 
So here what happens is there is an option for us to provide a destination ARN. So the ARN of the queue that receives the moved message, that is your destination ARN. If this field is left blank, the messages will be re-driven back to the respective original source queues itself. So in here, in this use case, we don't need to provide that because we already know that the original source is Pytholic main and it has to go there. Now what happens is we just need to type this command AWS SQS start message move task and we can just provide the source ARN as the dead letter queue and we need to just type or just hit enter. Yes, now it has created an asynchronous task and this is the asynchronous task ID. So this is task handle. So in order to check the status of that particular asynchronous task that is right now being performed, there is a, another command that we can run. AWS SQS list hyphen message hyphen move tasks hyphen hyphen source ARN and let's provide the ARN. And here it will show us the list of move tasks. Here, see. So now we have the status is complete. It has already been moved. And we have the source ARN. We have the approximate number of messages move. It is one. Approximate number of messages to move is one. And the timestamp that we have here. So this will give you the information about the move tasks, such as the status, whether they are running or completed or failed, and the approximate number of messages that have been moved. In case you need to stop the redrive operation for any reason, you can use the cancel message move task command or API call by providing task handle you receive from the start message move task. So you can provide this task handle to the cancel message move task op command or API call and it will cancel that operation. And finally, once the message has been moved back to the source queue, they can be processed again by the consumer application. And you can consume the message again from the application queue. And if you want to see this, you can just do a simple AWS receive message operation again. Yes, now it is back to the main queue. So that's pretty much the life cycle of a message from being sent to the queue, failing to process, moving to the dead letter queue, and then being re-driven back to the source queue for another attempt at processing. Yes, this is a powerful mechanism to ensure messages are not lost when temporary issues affect the processing of these messages. So I hope you enjoyed this session and if you did, please do support the channel by subscribing, hit the like button and share it with your friends who might find it interesting. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, it's Pytholic. Signing off.